We're now back reviewing the code we just wrote to uh, set the access token on the API side when we're sending off a message. But something isn't right here. Again, it seems like we're mixing business logic with infrastructural concerns. We're creating an order, place order, and sending it off. But there in the middle, we have to set the access token. And this means that for every API call we're going to implement, we have to repeat the same code over and over again. So this is an area we definitely need to refactor. So to get rid of that line, we should talk a little bit about a concept in a service bus called message mutators. A message mutator is a way for you to write code that gets access and can modify the contents of the message being both sent and received. So the mutators operate both on the sending side and on the receiving side. So to change the contents of individual messages, you would implement the iMessageMutator interface. It's useful for things like doing validation and encryption on individual messages. The other mutator we have is the transport message mutator. So you implement I mutate transport messages. A transport message is the action message that goes onto the wire. Because in a service bus, you can actually send more than one applicative message in, the, in one single go. So you can actually send three of your messages in one physical message. So you, you would use the I mutate transport messages to set the header values for a entire batch of messages. That's useful for things like uh, compression. And as I mentioned in the beginning, they apply to both incoming and outgoing messages. So let's take a look at how we can use a message mutator to, to get rid of that um, line that sets the access token. So let's switch back to code. So I'm going to just create a new uh, mutator. Let's create a folder. Let's call it authentication. And in there, let's create a new class. Let's call it access token mutator. In there, we could implement the I message mutator, or I transport message mutator, because we only need one token for the entire transport message. So, I mutate transport messages. And then we need to use the nservicebus.message mutator uh, namespace. So let's implement that one. But as we can see now, you get two methods, mutate incoming and mutate outgoing. And in this case, we really are only after mutating the outgoing messages, because this one will be invoked when we do bus.send. So it seems unnecessary that we need to make this a no operation. So let's use another interface instead. Let's use I mutate outgoing transport messages. So let's see what we get if we use that one instead. So let's remove those. And we implement the interface. Now we get only one method. Mutate outgoing. And that's that's pretty much only, the only thing we need here. So what I'll do now, I go back to my controller and I, I'll take this code out. And we go into our mutator and in there we'll well, uh, instead of doing that on the orders, we can just take the actual transport message. And on there we have headers. So we set the access token header to the value of the HTTP context.current request params. Essentially the same code as last time. So we hit F5. And we'll send an order off. And see what happens. As you'll see now, the token is still null. Because something didn't work right there. 
there is one thing you need to know about the message mutator and that's that they're not automatically registered in a container you have to do that manually so let's go back and modify our mutator to do that in this case I'm just gonna slap on another interface I need initialization like that that's in the service bus config namespace and when we implement that interface that's a hook into the configuration process so in there we can just do configure dot instance dot configure dot configure component and we pass in the access token mutator and we can make it a instance per call like that so now our mutator is registered in a container and it will be invoked by a service bus when we're sending messages out so let's set a breakpoint here to make sure that our mutator is indeed invoked. We hit F5. And again, we're sending off an order. Let's use the bus stop token. We hit return. Now we can see that our access token mutator was indeed invoked. So we're setting the access token header, picking it out from the uh, HTTP context. We hit F5 and now we're, when we're back in debugging our backend, we will see that that the token is indeed set and now the message was authenticated and our place order handle is, is invoked so everything is working as we would expect. So by using a message mutator that will react on outgoing messages we were able to put all the code needed to fetch the access token from our HTTP context stick it into a message header and send it off. The only thing we were needed to be aware of is that message mutators are not automatically registered in a container. So for a service bus to pick them up, we had to, to manually configure them. So in other place, our order controller now looks clean and nice again. Creating the order and send it off.